Okay, so here we go, uh, 8.2, trigonometric integrals, and um, I don't know if I should give you a warning per se, but uh, these integrals tend to be kind of algebra fest, so I'm only going to have time to do about three or four examples in a reasonable length lecture. Uh, so follow along and, and, and kind of think about why I'm doing all these steps um, as you go along, because it... Um, uh, for these particular integrals, the, the devil's in the details. Uh, so let's just jump right into it here. Um, but before we really get into it, we got to do a little review. Um, so this is, uh, uh, we'll do a quick trig review. And first of all, and I love this one, uh, we're going to write down sine squared of theta plus cosine squared of theta equals what? What does this equal? Sine squared plus cosine squared equals always equals 1. Okay, this is the Pythagorean identity. Pythagorean identity. And I'd like you to think about why is this called the Pythagorean identity. And there's two others. Um, and if you can tell me what the two others are in class... Uh, that would be great, and uh, we'll talk about where they come from. And I guarantee you that there will be a quiz question related to these uh, trig identities. All right. So there's your fair warning. So sine squared plus cosine squared equals one. Um, most of us hopefully know that. Uh, there's another one that says the sine squared of theta equals. All right, and this is one minus the cosine of 2 theta all over 2. And then I could write that cosine squared of theta equals 1 plus cosine 2 theta all over 2. Okay, and some people call these half angle, double angle. I mean, here's, if you want to double it, you do it you know, kind of like this, and if you want to cut it in half, you solve for this and go the other way. There's, I posted an, an MIT lecture that really does an excellent job, much better than I could do, uh, of explaining how to drive these, and so I would uh, encourage you to watch that one as well. Um, so these are some, some identities that we're going to use, all right? So let's uh, get started then um, with an uh, example. Jump right into it. Uh, the theory here really isn't uh, isn't that interesting. Um, so I think examples are the way to go. The integral of sine to the fifth x dx. Okay. Now you might think, well, I could do the sine to the fifth. I increase the power, you know, um, to six, and then divide by six, and that's how you do the integral. But really, what you have to think about is this is the same as the integral of sine of x raised to the fifth power dx, right? So can we just simply apply the power rule, raise this to 6, divide by 6, to this one? We can't, right? Because the chain rule says we have to have the derivative of what's on the inside. We would need that. And currently, we don't have it. So uh, let's let's see how we can rearrange this integral um, to try to make it a little more convenient looking for us. The first thing I'm going to do is write this one out as sine squared of x squared, which gives me four of the signs that I need, times the sine of x dx. All right, well, why did I do that? All right, maybe the next step will make it a little more clear. Sine squared, I can replace that with 1 minus cosine squared of x squared times the sine of x dx. Okay. Why would I do it this way? Because now I've got some cosines and some sines. I've got sines and cosines available so that I can use some u-substitution 
and uh, and then maybe this will work better. So we'll invoke our old friend foil, and we'll foil this thing out. So let's see here. Uh, 1 squared is 1, minus cosine squared minus cosine squared, so it's minus 2 cosine squared x, and then negative cosine squared and negative cosine squared, uh, positive cos fourth x. And this whole thing, that's squared already, so then I multiply this by the sine of x dx. Okay, so now uh, I'm getting closer to something I do here. So I'm going to distribute my sine. I'm going to say that sine x times 1 is simply sine x. I'm going to break this into three separate integrals, which I can do. 2 cosine squared of x, uh, sine of x, so that's minus the integral of uh, 2. That's a pretty sloppy 2. Actually, I'm going to put the 2 out here as long as I'm uh, doing this. So 2 cos squared x sine x dx, and then finally plus the integral of cos to the fourth x sine x dx. Okay. Now you can use the technique you learned back in um, Calc one, and I'm gonna, you know, I always do these as a little sidebar, and since I don't have a lot of room, I'm gonna say that u equals uh, u equals cosine of x, all right, which means that du will equal well, the derivative of cosine is negative sine x dx. So I need a negative sine of x. If I'm going to use treat cosine of x as my function. So what do I need to do? I need to do a little bit of rearranging and I'm going to do that in a different color. So I need a negative sine of x here. So I'll make that negative, which means I have to make that negative to keep things square. And then I need to make that negative, which means I can make that positive. So now I've got my negative sine of x, and uh, yeah, I'll just leave that one as is. <clears throat> so now I've got, I'm set up a little bit better to do some u substitution. So I know I can replace my negative sine of x dx with a du. So let's do that. Let's rewrite this integral in terms of u. Um, this one, well, I'm just going to, the integral of sine of x I know is negative cosine of x, right? So that one just becomes, uh, this one I'll deal with later. So that means the dots mean I'll deal with that later. So this becomes 2 cosine squared is actually u squared. So this becomes plus 2 u squared. And then negative sine x dx is du. And that's, I still have to take this integral. And um, I'm going to do it here. So I'm going to say subtracting uh, u to the fourth du, the integral of that. Okay, so that's doable. And I'll continue this. You know, procrastination, right? It makes the world go round. So now I can, this is u to the square du. I can just use my power rule there, right? I've done that for a long time. So that power goes up to 3 divided by uh, the new power. So that's 3, so that's 2 over 3. So this becomes 2 thirds u to the cubed. Uh, that's it. Minus. Well, u to the fifth over 5. And I have to add some c on the end of that. But I still have to, to deal with this sine of x. Well, no, let's do my back substitution first. So u is actually cosine of x, so this becomes plus 2 thirds uh, cosine cubed of x. Uh, that's not dx, because I'm done with my integration. And um, minus uh, one fifth cos fifth x, and then plus c. And now I can finally do my integral of sine is simply negative cosine. So this is 
negative cosine of x. So that's it. Uh, and I add my constant of integration there. Put a box around the whole thing and feel pretty confident about my answer. So page and a half there to do one integral. Granted, I am writing big and sloppy on a computer tablet, but it was a little bit of an algebra fest uh, to keep track of this stuff. So let's take another example here. Uh, let's say I've just got an even power. All right. Another example. Uh, that last one was a, an odd power. Uh, this one I'll do an even power because that's not quite as convenient. All right, so what I'm going to do, the integral of sine squared x dx. All right, well, I could change this to 1 minus cosine squared, yeah, but then I'm, 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 you know, I'm trying to do cosine squared instead of sine squared, so I you know, didn't really make any progress. You know, a lot of times you have to take a step back until they make any progress. Um, so here we have to invoke these double angle formulas. So this will become the integral of 1 minus cosine 2x all over 2 dx. All right. uh, I could split this into two fractions. I have the 1 half minus cos 2x over 2, so I'll do that. And this will become the integral of 1 half dx. Now that one's easy. Minus the integral, uh, let's take the half out of there. 1 over 2 integral of cosine of 2x dx. Okay. Well, the integral of 1 half dx, that's pretty easy. I can deal with that later. Um, but now we've got to work with this cosine of 2x, right? Again, it's not simply just negative sine because I've got this 2x in here. So let's go through all the steps and actually do this u substitution. Um, if I said u... And this is different than integration by parts u. This is just, you know, some other u is going to be 2x. That means du equals, uh, well, just 2 dx, right? The problem is I don't have a 2 dx. I've just got a dx. So I need to rewrite this. And there's a number of ways to think about this, but this is the way I do it. Um, I'll do integral of 1 half dx minus one half times the integral of cosine 2x. Well, I need a 2dx, so I'm just going to put a 2 in there. 2dx, right? Because that's what I need for my du. But I can't just do that. I can't just willy-nilly stick a 2 in there. To undo that 2, I have to put another one half out here. So this one half cancels out my 2. Totally legitimate move. But what that gives me is this, because now I have my 2dx there, which matches my 2dx there. Okay, so now this becomes an easier integral to do. My substitution becomes, well, I'll keep this one. I don't know why I didn't just write the dot, dot, dot here. Uh, glutton for punishment. One fourth. And now this becomes just the integral of the cosine of u du. All right, that's an easy integral to do. So that becomes, now I'll start my dots, minus one-fourth. Well, the integral of cosine is negative sine, so that actually becomes plus sine u plus c. Right, but u is actually 2x, so that becomes plus one-fourth sine 2x plus c. This one is pretty easy. The integral of 1 half is just 1 half x. And that is my final answer. Um, so I have my plus c, everything I need, all the parts. So once again, I put a box neatly around my answer. Like that. Good. So that works. Um, let's do one that's maybe... A little bit more involved, and so I'll do another even power, but one that's maybe not as nice. So, uh, example. I'll do the integral 
of cosine 4 x to the x. Okay. Now when I've got even powers in general, uh, I have to invoke the um, you know, these half angle, double angle type of formulas. But I don't have a cosine squared here, I've got a cosine to the fourth. So I somehow want to make it look more like something I can work with. So I'm going to write this as cosine squared of x squared dx. All right. Cosine squared of x, all by itself, I don't have a nice sign in there available to use. Uh, I'm going to use the double angle formula, half angle, whatever that thing is. And in this case, when it's cosine, it's 1 plus cosine 2x all over 2 squared dx. All right. Now it becomes a little bit of an algebra fest. Um, this 1 half, the 1 over 2, and I square that, it becomes a 1 fourth. So I'm going to pull that out here. And uh, when I foil this thing, uh, I think I just foiled something similar to that. Um, it becomes 1, let's see, plus that thing twice, 2 cos 2x, and then it'll be a cos squared of 2x there, dx, all right? Um, so I can break this into different integrals and say this is uh, the integral of 1, which will be easy to deal with. So it's 1 fourth the integral of 1 dx. 2 cosine of 2x, uh, the 2 times the 1 fourth will give me 1 half. So that's 1 half the integral of cosine of 2x. I feel like we just did something similar to this. Cosine, oh yeah, here we go. Cosine of 2x, cosine of 2x. That's nice. So I'm going to remember this. Save me some work. And then finally I have uh, plus one-fourth the integral of cos squared of 2x dx. I forgot my dx here, didn't I? Okay, so now I've broken this down into a bunch of smaller integrals. Have I made any progress? Integral of 1 dx, piece of cake. Integral of cosine of 2x. Well, I did that over here, so I can probably do that again. Integral of cosine squared of 2x. Oh, man. Here I've got another even power, cosine squared, all by itself. So I'm going to just do some dots here and work with this. Well, um, cosine squared by itself, I've got to use the, that double angle again. So I'm going to say this is 1 fourth times the integral of 1 when it's cosine, it's plus. Uh, cosine, now it's double this, so it becomes 4x all over 2 dx, right? Um, so that's getting to be kind of a hassle. Here we have a 1 half, and here we have a cosine of 4x. So this becomes the integral of uh, 1 fourth times 1 half is 1 eighth. And that's just a 1 that's left in there. And then I've got one-fourth of this, so it's um, one-eighth times the cosine of 4x. All right, so here I've got another one. Then this one is doable. It's very similar to the cosine of 2x, except it's cosine of 4x. This one's easy. So perhaps I can finish this up on the next page. And uh, you guys will have to flip uh, back and forth pages, but I'm not going to do it too much. Um, so if I remember correctly, I've now got uh, one fourth the integral of one dx, and then I had plus one fourth the integral of cosine of two x dx. And I've got um, 1 8th integral of 1 dx, so that's easy. And then plus 1 8th integral of cosine of 4x dx. So I've actually broken this thing into four easier integrals. All right, let's look at this one. The integral of dx, 1 dx is just x, so that becomes x over 4. Plus the integral of 2x. Remember, 
I've got to have my derivative in there, so I need a 2 dx. So if I stick a 2 in here, I've got to put a 1 half out there, so this becomes uh, negative 1 eighth. Um, oh, is that negative? I always get this backwards. No, 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 no. Um, yeah, that's the derivative of sine is cosine, so the integral of cosine is, uh, no, that's, that's negative. So that's negative uh, one eighth sine of two x. Uh, and then this is simply just x over eight. And this one, I need a four uh, because I need the, the four right here. And so that becomes uh, the derivative of cosine is sine. Wait, hold on. Is this negative sine or positive sine? It's cosine of 2x. Let's go back and check. We did the cosine of 2x, it becomes positive. Yeah, so we do switch signs. I just want to make sure. Um, so this is, going to switch with sine. this is going to switch signs as well. So it's going to become minus. I need the 4 in here, so I put a 1 fourth out here, which makes this a 1 32nd. Um, and that becomes sine of 4x plus c. So that was a serious algebra fest um, to get to this answer uh, because we had to do quite a bit of you know shuffling around uh, to break our one even powered integral into um, several easy integrals that we can deal with. Uh, so let's take a quick review of what we've done so far and uh, stick a photo in here and it's uh, trig tips. I just took this right out of the uh, uh, right out of the book. I just want to make you bigger. Okay, there we go. So let's take a, take a look here. Um, the first one did m was odd. All right, so we have sine m of x. And the reason the odd is nice is then we can pull one of them out. We can just pull one of these things out, use the Pythagorean identity to switch between sines and cosines here, and then we can distribute this, and then we have always uh, an integral in the form that is easy to use the u substitution. All right. The way this is explained in the book isn't great, but it, but it is a nice summary. So uh, um, look through this and make sure it makes sense. So if m is even and n is odd, all right. So we have sine m cosine n. So we've got some even, some odds. Well, we just break this into a cosine squared here, uh, and then a cosine here. Shuffle it around again so that we can make a nice easy u substitution. So that's one step harder than this, all right? Finally, the real hassle comes when they're both even. And when they're both even, we have to use these identities and keep breaking it down until you have your know, cosine of 2x, cosine of 4x, cosine of 8x, whatever it is, however many times you have to do it to break it down um, until we have single powers of these uh, trig functions, all right? So that's the... Um, the gist of, of these types of problems. But wait, there's more. Uh, so let's look at a couple more trig identities. And uh, I've had so much trouble with, uh, with these trig identities that I've actually, I'm, I'm teaching trig this semester um, to make sure that the calc students are a little better prepared Hoping, you know, uh, whether that works or not. I'm hoping that, that with some emphasis on this trig, you'll do better in uh, calc. So we've got this one of uh, sine of um, m times x times the cosine of n times x will equal one half the quantity sine m plus n x plus sine 
m minus n x. Right? There's one nice trig identity. Um, another one is if it's a product of two sines. So the sine of uh, mx, sine of nx equals negative one-half the quantity cosine m plus nx minus cosine m minus nx quantity. Okay, now you can see why, you know, this is crazy. I mean, unless you use this every day, this would be really hard to memorize and you just drop a negative sign. This is why you get to use a uh, crib sheet on your uh, quiz or exam. On, on quizzes, you don't get a crib sheet, but on quizzes, I'll always give you the useful identities that, that you might need. On uh, an exam, you really come up with that on your own. All right, and the last one is cosine of mx and cosine of nx equals one half the quantity cosine m plus nx plus cosine m minus nx quantity. All right. And I think these are in your book. I think they may even be summed up in one little table. But I don't have my book here, so I don't know. Uh, let's do an example uh, of this flavor. Uh, can I fit it on here? Um, well, no, I'm going to start on the next page just because it's an even number of pages anyway. Uh, so let's give it a whirl. So the example I'm going to try is uh, the integral of the sine 2x. Uh, cosine 3x dx. All right, so we have this uh, a product of, of sines and cosines. Um, and uh, this is, you know, the, this product of this thing and, and using that first identity that I wrote down, we could write this as the one-half times... Um, yeah, one half the integral, one half the quantity, sine of the sum of these things, so that's 5x, and then plus uh, the sine of the difference, which is negative x dx, okay? Now it's important to notice here um, that the sine of negative x, right, is the same as the negative sine of x, uh, because sine is an odd function. You don't have to use that property, but it reduces a negative sign, uh, in my mind. Um, uh, but let's break this down into, um, a couple more integrals. So, one half the integral of the sine of 5x. So the sine of negative x is the same as negative sine of x. So I can just subtract the integral of sine x dx. Okay. Um, so this is uh, the sine of 5x. Remember, I'm going to need a 5 here, so which means I need to put a 1 fifth out there. So that's going to give me a 1 tenth. So, um, well, yeah, let's just, I'm going to say u equals 5x. So that means du equals 5dx, so I need to put a 5 in there, which brings a 1 tenth out there. Um, so this becomes 1 tenth the, uh, times the integral of the sine of u du, and then over here we have minus, uh, oh, I forgot to distribute this 1 half here, the, they're playing. This should be a uh, one half a minus there. So minus um, one half the integral of 
sine of x dx, okay? Um, so what we wind up then in the very end of this is uh, a negative one-tenth cos u, um, and then the derivative of sine is cosine, so the, derivative, the integral of cosine is sine, so the sine doesn't change there, minus one-half uh, cosine x plus c, okay? Um, and then we got to substitute our 5 back in here, so it's minus 1 tenth uh, cosine of 5x minus 1 half cosine of x plus c. Okay, so again, really just a, uh, uh, a lot of shuffling around, rearranging um, to get these things to work out. So that is it. The topic of the day, and uh, please go through these. Uh, if I made any mistakes, please let me know about them, and uh, I will see you guys in class.